Hey Al, let's uh, continue the read-through and talk about declaration notation. So there is a slightly shorter way to create a function binding. When the function keyword is used at the start of a statement, it works differently. The function square takes parameter x and the return is going to be x multiplied by x. Uh, this is a function declaration. The statement defines the binding square and points it at the given function. It is slightly easier to write and doesn't require a semicolon after the function. Uh, there is one subtlety with this form of function definition, and as you'll see, it looks like they're calling the future function here, but they've defined it on line three. So if we run this, well, let's read the following paragraph. I, I, I do this literally every time. So uh, the preceding code works even though the function is defined below the code that uses it, as you can see. Function declarations are not part of the regular top to bottom flow of control. They are conceptually moved to the top of their scope and can be used by all the code in that scope. This is sometimes useful because it offers the freedom to order code in any way that seems meaningful without worrying about having to define all functions before they are used. Um, you may or may not have heard people refer to this as something called hoisting, and it essentially means that this future binding as a function and completely uh, aware of what that function does is available at anywhere inside of the scope that we're currently existing in. Um, so we're going to run this, we're going to see that the future says you'll never have flying cars, and Let's do the other version. So the other version would be, we would say something like const future is equal to a function that takes no parameters and it's going to return you'll never have flying cars. Well, that's kind of a sad story. We're going to comment out this, which I found out yesterday I cannot comment out in the usual fashion I'm accustomed to, which is to say highlight the whole thing and hit a button to make it all comment out. Um, so we'll just start there. Now what happens in this case is we're going to get the same result, right? Because we've, <coughs> excuse me, we've defined future uh, before we're calling future. Now if we're trying to uh, get at what we just did, let's go ahead and cut this using command X or control X. And we're going to paste it using command V or control V uh, beneath here. So theoretically we've done the same thing, uh, but as we just read, this isn't going to work, right? Uh, well, go on then. Hmm. Future, future, function, function. Return, you'll never have flying cars. Now let's get rid of all this. Am I not hitting the right enter button? Run code. Um, interesting. I wonder why it's doing that. Well, if there was ever a time for Replit, it's right now. So let's go ahead and take this over to Replit. We'll paste in here, and I'm going to hit run. Ah, excellent. So here's our error. Future is not defined. And essentially what we're trying to get at is that future uh, has not been defined by line 2. And that's if we read it in this fashion. Now, the difference that they're trying to get us to understand in this point is that if we write future as a function declaration, which is to say we say uh, future, um, well, that's a cool feature. I guess you can click on this. Well, never mind. So function future takes in no parameters. And so now we've written it in declaration style, which is, of course, how it originally looked. We run it, and we see our nice little console output. So cool. I'm not exactly sure why that's not working here, but that's not really that big of a deal. As you're going to notice, more and more of the code snippets are going to be more demonstrative than they are going to be practically usable. And the idea is that sometimes they'll have portions that are uh, defined differently or well, I don't really like that explanation. Why isn't this working? Let's go ahead and run it again. See, it should be revert to original code. Um, I wonder if there's a way to clear the output. Reset sandbox. Deactivate editor. Let's reactivate the editor. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's delete this and see what happens. Perfect. So now if we were to do our const future is equal to a function, uh, and let's just have it console.log. Hey, if we do this, you see we still have future is not a function. And you know what's kind of cool about that? It doesn't say future is not defined. And the fun part about that is that it actually does know that there's a variable called future. Um, it just doesn't know that it's a function until line three happens, which I always thought was kind of cool because that hoisting thing we discussed a moment ago where uh, function declarations are essentially hoisted to the top of your current scope, 
um, variables are hoisted next, but not their actual assignments. It's just the presence of that value. You see that we don't get uh, future is undefined, we get it's not a function, and that's because it's essentially, okay, so I have a const called future, I'm not sure what it's gonna be, but I'm just gonna save that. So, uh, their conception moves to the top of the scope, use blah, 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 without worrying, define the function before they're used. Um, this phrase, this is sometimes useful, uh, and as it relates to freedom, is essentially why you'll hear people say that they hate or love JavaScript, because you can pretty much do whatever you want and follow paradigms for other programming languages, which we'll see as we continue on. So, short section, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.